up my sleeves. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you where I come from and why I'm here with you today. Since I was young, I've always been drawn to stories. I could, I could never concentrate in school. There was too much to learn and not enough storytelling. So when I finally got on stage in a theater group, I felt at home. I did not have to worry about what I should be like. I just had to be whatever the story told me to be, which was very liberating. So when I left college, I applied for a musical theater academy in Sweden, and I got in. Three years later, I was a musical theater performer. <laughs> and one of the things I learned early on in theater is that every good story starts with a good prologue, a good beginning. A good prologue captures both your attention and your interest from the start. So you feel like you have to watch the whole story just to see how it ends. I have two favorite prologues, and I want to share both of them with you here today. The first one, I think you know, goes like this. Once upon a time in a faraway land, there lived a young prince in a shining castle. Though the prince had everything his heart desired, he was spoiled, selfish, unkind. Then one winter's night, an old beggar woman came to the castle and offered him a single rose in return for shelter from the bitter cold. Repulsed by her haggard appearance, the prince sneered at the gift and turned the old woman away. But she warned him not to be deceived by appearances, for beauty is found within. When he dismissed her again, the old woman's ugliness melted away to reveal a beautiful enchantress. He tried to apologize, but it was too late, for she had seen that there was no love in his heart. And as a punishment, she transformed him into a hideous beast and placed a powerful spell on the castle and everyone who lived there. Ashamed of his monstrous form, the beast concealed himself inside the castle with a magic mirror as his only window to the outside world. The rose she had offered was truly an enchanted rose, which would bloom until his 21st birthday, if he could learn to love another and earn their love in return. By the time the last petal fell, then the spell would be broken. If not, he would be doomed to remain a beast for all time. As the years passed, he fell into despair and lost all hope. For who could ever learn to love a beast? The second one, not as long, equally effective, but from a very different type of story, goes like this. No one would have believed in the last years of the 19th century that human affairs were being watched from the timeless worlds of space. No one could have dreamed that we were being scrutinized as someone with a microscope studies creatures that swarm and multiply in a drop of water. Few men even considered the possibility of life on other planets. And yet, across the gulf of space, minds immeasurably superior to ours regarded this Earth with envious eyes. And slowly and surely, they drew their plans against us. That is from War of the Worlds, written by H.G. Wells in 1898, a scary apocalyptic science fiction story about Earth being invaded by Martians. Now, after 15 years on stage, I started to miss something. It, it was not enough to get up there and, and entertain just for the sake of getting standing, standing ovations afterwards. And I, what I started to miss was the communication. I wanted the audience to talk back. I've spent a lot of time performing and talking. But the driving force for me is no longer the praise. I, I want to talk. And I want to make you listen. But then I want you to talk back. I want to hear your stories too. I want to hear your opinions too. 
I want to hear your dreams too. <laughs> it is my firm belief that we don't talk enough anymore. George Bernard Shaw wrote one of my favorite musicals, My Fair Lady. He also wrote one of my favorite quotes. The single biggest problem with communication is the illusion that it has taken place. We're stuck behind screens writing volumes of utterances that we would never share with anyone face to face under the illusion that we communicate. But it is face to face that life begins. It's in the interaction that we become human, that we feel truly alive. So let's talk. Let us listen. It's face to face that we communicate. Thank you.